Welcome to Biochemistry 443. This is our first lecture. And today we're going to be covering some of the basic concepts that we're going to be covering in this course. So uh, without further ado, let's get going. So uh, one of the first things that uh, that's a little unusual when you study metabolism is it's not really part of the central dogma. We learn that DNA is turned into RNA and that's turned into protein. But we don't really talk about what happens after the downstream of that transfer of information. So metabolites are the things that are produced by enzymes, right? And we, we have DNA that holds the, the, the sequence of information, the, the, the parts list for the human body, and it gets translated into RNA and made into protein, where the protein takes action. And when it takes action, the, uh, the consequence is it makes metabolites. Well, what, what exactly are those metabolites? And, and what, what do they have to do with your body? Well. They do lots of things. They regulate energy. We'll talk about how they have effects on health and disease and how you transform one kind of food into another kind of food. And they do that through a series of pathways. And over the course of this, uh, this, uh, um, uh, of this series of lectures here that we're going to have over the fall, you're going to become familiar both with some pathways that you've learned about before in your introductory biochemistry class, like glycolysis. But we'll also get to learn about uh, a whole range of other pathways about how we transform Form one set of molecules into another set of molecules. So just to touch base on those, it's going to be include, uh, including how you transform sugars into complex carbohydrates. We're going to learn about how you convert uh, uh, sugar into energy. We'll learn about how you make the building blocks of molecules. That's including, you know, nucleic acids and proteins and uh, all the basic uh, all the basic materials you need to make life work. We're also going to touch on a few uh, different kinds of topics that we, you may or may not have heard about before. We'll learn about uh, how plants uh, uh, deal with metabolism. We'll learn about nutrition and diet. We'll learn about how flux is regulated. And we'll learn about uh, the modern approaches to understanding metabolism. So that's a new approach called metabolomics. So we're going to learn about that over the course of the coming weeks. Well. So this uh, this little lecture map will reappear in each of our uh, in each of our lectures, and in each uh, course, we'll tell you about where we are in this map and where we're going. So the bad news is that metabolism is complicated. It's got lots and lots of different parts to it, and these very complex pathways. And learning it's challenging. Um, it's uh, it's the bane for students all over the world, uh, and uh, it's it's uh, it's uh, it's a it's a tough subject, but. There's an awful lot of really um, fantastic and amazing insights you can you can gain by uh, by digging into these pathways, understanding how they work. And my hope is over the course of this term, you'll learn not just the structures and the names of the uh, of the pathways, but you'll also gain some understanding about the rules life plays by in transforming one set of molecules into another set of molecules. So we'll be learning about some of those rules over the course of this course. So here's a listing of all the pathways that we're going to be covering here this, uh, uh, um, uh, in this section. Of course, pathways are the core of metabolism, so we'll, we'll re refresh your memory on glycolysis. I know you guys have learned about that in your introductory biochemistry class, and we'll talk a little bit more about anaerobic pathways. We'll also talk about the pentose phosphate pathway, which is how we make sugars and where we get our reducing equivalents that drives a lot of our, a lot of our redox stability. We'll learn about how we store sugar as, uh, as glycogen, how the, what the process is for making and degrading that molecule. We'll learn about the TCA cycle, uh, again, in a way that you haven't learned about it before, but uh, coming at it from understanding it from the perspective of the logic of chemistry. Uh, we'll also learn about how uh, microbes cheat and, and use a, this thing called the glyoxylate shunt, which is something that we don't have. And if we did, the, things like the Atkins diet wouldn't work or the keto diet wouldn't work. And we'll learn about how that, a whole lot, how that fits in nutrition. We'll learn about how amino acids are uh, made and degraded. And we'll learn about what we do with all of our extra uh, nitrogen, how we get rid of it via the urea cycle. We'll learn about how we make uh, nucleotides, nucleosides, and how that has a really profound relationship with cancer metabolism. And then we'll learn about the cool things that plants do, like how, where did all this carbon that we're made out of and everything around us is, uh, is made out of, how it got there and um, how plants use photosynthesis to make all this stuff. 
So some of the main learning objectives that I want to make sure that everybody is uh, familiar with on this course is that um, is that that metabolism is ultimately rooted in chemistry and it plays by rules in chemistry and we're going to learn those rules. The thing is that um, you know it's not infinitely complex. There's there's sort of a there's a restricted range of repeating themes that you see again and again in biochemistry and those are the things that we're going to work with and become familiar with over the course of this. Uh, class. Um, and we're going to learn about how does that chemistry is just fundamental to all living things. We're also going to find out what happens when that chemistry goes wrong and how that can have a really profound impact on human health. So without further ado, let's talk a little bit about what is it that is, uh, uh, what is, what is metabolism? So I think when we generally think about metabolism, we think about it in the context of athletics, and certainly the difference between the man on the left and the man on the right is the state of his glycogen reserves. Energy is what allows us to move, it allows us to run, it allows us to compete, um, and uh, and that energy comes in in the form of ATP, which is our you know the basic uh, energy molecule for our body, and we derive that ATP energy from lots of different sources. So we're like, uh, like the example I showed in my, uh, my recent introductory video, we take carbon sources, we combine it with oxygen, we convert it into CO2. And when we do that, we, are, uh, we release, uh, uh, release uh, um, uh, a lot of energy, you know, up to 34 uh, kilojoules per mole here in the case of complete oxidation of glucose. But um, uh, you know the the underlying, uh, although the the series of reactions that we go through is is much more controlled when going through glycolysis and uh, and aero, uh, and uh, oxidative phosphorylation. The all the net effect is very similar to burning a candle. The only difference is how well we have it controlled, how well we regulate it, and how we can harness that as get that potential energy as chemical energy to do things like um, you know make ATP and store that energy there. But you know, uh, ATP and glucose aren't the only ways we can get energy, and we'll learn a lot more about that the, over this course. We can we can convert all kinds of things into into uh, chemical energy. We can take fats, we can take phospho uh, uh, phospholipids, we can take amino acids, we can take um, uh, uh, complex sugars, all kinds of things, and convert those into energy and ultimately those different phases of energy come out when we engage in metabolism and that's really important for uh both for um you know athletic things but also for um uh, uh for all kinds of physiology in our body so of course metabolism happens inside the cell you know these are reactions that occur within the cells and the cells uh, all living cells share this sort of core structure of, uh, of organic transformations that, that we undergo. And we call that central carbon metabolism. And uh, that's, that's something that's inherent to all cells. It's just a sort of scaffold under which we transform one set of molecules to another. Well, the thing is that uh, the reactions that we've learned here um, so far in, in, you know, in your introductory biochemistry course and things you're familiar with, uh, exist in a context of physiology though. So although all these reactions are happening inside of cells, you know, our cells are big collections of, of, uh, of, uh, uh, of metabolism and, and they specialize and do different things in different parts of our body. And so we'll learn a little bit about that in this course, how that specialization, centralization, and, and flow of nutrients around the body allows you to do things that you really couldn't do if you were a single cellular organism. So one of those important things that it allows us to do is it allows us to starve. It allows us to deal with adversity. Um, you know, human beings are evolved to starve and it's amazing what we can put up with. Um, uh, it's also amazing how diverse of a diet we can tolerate. You know, there are people who eat almost entirely meat and, pro, uh, you know, meat and fat based diets and other, you know, other, other folks who have uh, entirely vegetarian based diets. And yet our body can deal with these really wild extremes. Also, your own body can deal with both times of great excess and times of really uh, 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 um, epic starvation. And yet 
despite that, your body can maintain relatively uh, steady state levels of amino acids, sugars, and things that your body needs to survive uh, within your blood. And it does this through this vast network of chemical transformations that we call metabolism, central carbon metabolism. It allows us to interconvert all the available uh, nutrients that we have uh, uh, around us into the, the kinds of molecules that are necessary to keep life alive. And those reactions are what underpin everything that happens in life. It's what allows you to learn and what allows you to make the action potentials that fire down your neurons. Ultimately, that's made possible by these, uh, by these uh, um, uh, 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 electron, or I'm sorry, these uh, uh, voltage graded, uh, gated uh, ATP um, reactions, ATP burning reactions that, um, that maintain the voltage gradient across your cells and allow you to fire this action potential. So that's part of what learning is, is, uh, is uh, based on metabolism. It's also something that we become really familiar with in disease. And so, some of these diseases you've probably seen before. So this, this is phenylketonuria. This, uh, this kind of uh, disease is uh, something that uh, is uh, uh, in people who have trouble processing um, uh, phenylalanine, they're uh, lacking this enzyme. And so if you ever see at the bottom of uh, certain kinds of sweeteners, they say, you know, warning to phenyl uh, uh, ketonurates like this, this package contains phenylalanine. That's what this is about. So we'll learn about those category of metabolic disorders uh, and how they can affect metabolism. But uh, we'll also learn about some things that you may not have thought about as metabolic diseases, things like cancer. Um, uh, which uh, which people typically have thought historically about as a as a um, as a genetic disease is actually uh, uh, intimately tied to metabolism. We'll learn about the Warburg effect, and we'll talk, learn about uh, how um, uh, there's uh, autophagy and, and glutamine catabolism, all kinds of uh, uh, adaptations that happen in cancer cells, and how that's intimately tied to uh, to the evolution and progression of cancers. So, you know, it, metabolism isn't just restricted to what humans do and what humans suffer from. It also has a lot to do with hum, what, what, what humans would like to achieve. And uh, so like the transformation of cellulosic biomass into biofuels, for example, is effectively a metabolic activity. We're trying to convince microbes into making molecules that, that are useful for us on this particular case. We're talking about taking cellulose and turning it into butanol by Clostridium acetobutylicum. Uh, but there are, you know, all kinds of things that we do in our industrial world that rely on metabolism. So one of the things that's peculiar about metabolism is that, um, is that, you know, the, the devil really lies in the details here for, um, uh, for it. So in this particular case, we have, uh, um, uh, you know, what seems to be a really minor structural difference here between two sugar molecules. We have alpha link glucose, we have beta link glucose. It's just whether these bonds are, uh, you know, it's just the, the orientation of uh, how these two glucose ma uh, molecules are linked. But when you make polymers out of those two molecules, whether alpha or beta linked, they make profoundly different kinds of, of, of biomolecules. So in the case of alpha link uh, 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 biomolecules, you make starch or glycogen, which is, you know, what we eat in bread. And if they're beta linked, they become cellulose and uh, undigestible tree parts, right? So uh, one of the things that we're going to learn about is how these little tiny chemical differences can have a really, you know, a really major impact on the, on the behavior of molecules. Um, another thing that's really important, uh, and, and one of the things that's different in biochemistry than in, in other kinds of chemistry is stereo, stereochemistry is really important. Um, you know, uh, biomolecules have handedness. They, uh, um, they, you know, they have, uh, um, they've got a, um, uh, uh, a symmetry to them, a right and left hand. And uh, although, you know, the chemical properties of left hand and right hand molecules are, are physically really similar, they're really different when it comes to biochemistry. The, um, the, um, uh, and that's because the molecules or the macromolecules that we work with, uh, uh, you know, our, our proteins, our enzymes, and all that have handedness themselves. And so the shape of molecules really profoundly affects whether they fit into binding pockets and whether chemistry can happen or not. 
And so we'll see some examples of this where, you know, some, some things that you haven't paid probably so much attention to in the past here with stereochemistry can have a really, uh, really big effect on, 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 uh, uh, on their function in biology. So, you know, here's one uh, classic example of this. This is this drug called thalidomide. So it came in two enantiomers and um, um, and uh, one of these two enantiomers uh, was used for treating morning sickness and was uh, uh, effective for that. And then the other one uh, caused these really um, terrible um, uh, developmental uh, problems. And, and the only difference between these molecules was um, that, uh, you know, it's just the chirality here at this, at this carbon source right here. So this is an example of how you know, minor details in chemistry can have a profound effect on the body. We're going to learn about how that works, why that works, and uh, and and how you know how that fits in larger context in metabolism. So the other thing that we're going to learn in this course is we're going to little, uh, learn a little bit about how metabolism is studied in in the modern era. So uh, you know you've probably learn about, uh, you know, the Pasteur effect and you've done titrations and you know about sort of like old school chemistry stuff. But what you haven't seen a lot is uh, the way metabolism has studied uh, today is just just radically different from from uh, from how it's been in the past, and and the technology has just been absolutely crazy climbing here over the last decade, and so um, this is something that my laboratory specializes in, and I think one of the cool things has been a kind of an opportunity out of this uh, COVID nineteen year, this crazy. Uh, 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 this crazy year is that I'm going to get to take you into a state-of-the-art mass spectrometry lab uh, for as part of your tutorial experience. We're going to be recording videos in there. We're going to do a series of real science projects right there in the context of the group. You guys are going to learn the, the nuts and bolts about how to do metabolomics and how modern biochemistry works and, uh, and work with real data, real instrument to software. Um, in the analysis. So I think it'll be a really cool uh, adventure this trip of kind of taking uh, uh, this this adventure. Normally I couldn't take 150 students or 120 students uh, uh, from this course through my through my lab, but through the uh, online medium we can. And so all of you are going to get an opportunity to see what modern biochemistry is all about. Anyway, I think that wraps up today's uh, uh, lecture and I wanted to say uh, thanks to everybody uh, for uh, for joining in on this course, and I'm really looking forward to what's going to be a new adventure in biochemistry, learning all the way here through uh, through this online format. And uh, yeah, so feel free to contact me or contact your TAs. We're going to be available via chats, and I'm looking forward to uh, to working with you over this coming term.